So we got the Banggood FM radio with alarm function. I just finished building the kit. Pretty straightforward. It's not a bad little unit. Um, the the really bizarre thing is is I have all these pieces left over after I was done. The only instruction manual you get is this schematic with the circuit board layout and a parts list. So let's uh, let's pop this baby apart so you can see what actually it takes to build it. So we got to take out the center screw. Too many screws up at the top. You do not take this screw off. That holds the antenna. You don't want to lose that or have that come loose inside of there. It actually has two circuit boards in it, which you'll see here shortly. You have to assemble the battery compo compartment. You put the antenna in, this little crimp terminal or uh, ring terminal underneath, screw it down tight. There's two screws that hold what is basically the analog board with the FM receiver chip on it. So you can see it's mostly all contained within this chip. This is actually a multimedia receiver. It can be an AM and FM radio. Uh, in this application, we're only FM. And second board comes the tricky part of the assembly because the LCD has to be hot bar mounted. So if you get this up a little closer, you can see that strip that runs along the top of the LCD there. That comes as just a piece of plastic with the carbon strips embedded into that, and you have to hot bar that on there. Included in the kit is a actual hot bar attachment which looks like this. Now I took this old Radio Shack soldering iron and tapped the heating element so that I could screw the hot bar attachment into it, which I also had to thread so that uh, I could seal the hot bar on there. It, it worked fairly well, and it was much easier than I expected it would be. Um, I was a little intimidated initially, but after I uh, after I did it, it was really just no big deal. Uh, the other uh, somewhat complicated part of this thing is this this weird cob package here, which has to be uh, soldered onto the board, as well as these dimple switches here, and they are a pain. I don't know if silver solder would have worked, but regular solder does not stick to them. So in a number of units that I've taken apart, um, they've just had sellotape over the top. So that's what I used here. I sunk them in the corners, sellotaped them down, and uh, they work just fine. Uh, the speaker has no mounting assembly in it at all. So again, copying from old uh, transistor radios that I've repaired in the past, I just put some speaker adhesive in four corners on there to uh, to glue it down. I also stuck a couple of a little uh, feet, cork uh, cabinet feet on there so that the board actually pushes on the speaker so that everything gets held in place. Functionality wise, it works fairly well uh, in, uh, in the uh, FM radio mode. I mean, it's a transistor radio. This is no hi-fi gizmo here by any means. Uh, the other thing, of course, to keep in mind is that um, the alarm function that's on here, if you intend on using it for that, 
actually just turns the radio on. So if you are uh, looking to wake up, make sure that you have properly tuned the radio so that you can uh, you can uh, get something to some audio to actually get your uh, get your butt out of bed. But I mean, as you can see here, the assembly is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only weird thing is the one of the weird things I should say is that the power switch comes through the front and the mechanism uh, that comes initially with it has a uh, switch assembly in the front to push all the dimple switches on the front and you have to cut the piece off where the power button goes through so that it comes through the front side of the radio. And that's really the long and the short of this kit. And for 10 bucks, approximately, um, it was a interesting kit to build. I'm a little perplexed about all the extra parts. I did double check and triple verify that I actually put everything in there that was supposed to be in there. I did have to... Uh, adjust the tuning capacitor so that I had the full American tuning range because uh, it actually went from about 68 megahertz to about 90 megahertz and that was it. Adjusting that capacitor uh, then made it possible to tune the normal band from about 90 to 108 megahertz. The, uh, The uh, clock to set it, you hold down the time set button and then you uh, adjust the minutes and hours while holding down the time set. Let's see if we can get some radio here. Well, it looks like I got my I didn't get my uh, buttons in there exactly correct. So these these buttons over here aren't hitting the dimple switches. So take it back apart again. Yeah, I should have checked that first to make sure that was working correctly. Luckily, it's not very hard to take apart. the heck I did there that those switches are not functioning properly. It certainly looks like it's on there. Okay. Let's go take it all the way apart. So I get for too much talking and not enough paying attention to what I'm doing. Set that back in there properly. I must not have been seated down there all the way. It certainly looks like I was. It's kind of self-aligning, which is interesting that it did the uh, switches weren't functional. You also got to kind of pay attention to which screws go where because a number of the screws pass through the through the back cover and onto the checking all the switch functions to make sure that they're working properly before I screw it back together again. You also want to make sure that the battery cables 
come out of the bottom and that the antenna cable comes off the back of the board up onto the top there. And then just tuck those in there. Put the top, put the back back on here, like so. And we got two little screws down here in the battery compartment, and those actually go through that front PCB in order to hold that tight right underneath the buttons. So maybe I didn't put these in tight before. Double A's in there. Oh, put power on. So now you can see, hold down the hour set and the time set and the time set and the minute set. You're all ready to go. Hold down this button that just displays the alarm and this turns the alarm on and off and you'll see a little indication right up there that the alarm is on. But again, for the most part, not, not a bad little gizmo. It's a little tricky to tune because, I mean, it's really an analog, analog tuning, tuning. What I'm assuming is happening is serial data is coming out of that chip. And being sent up to the up to the front panel to display on the uh, to display on the uh, LCD. The LCD is also meant to be viewed um, with the uh, unit laying flat or upright. The uh, viewing angle is not super super wide. But all in all, fun kit to put together. Good deal from Banggood.